Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Micro Gaming. Today we will be making a simple camera script to follow your character around, around the scene. Now of course if you wanted to you could just make the camera a child of your game object. However you may want to be able to change this around say for like cutscenes or maybe you just want to draw attention to something in the world. Something a bit more dynamic per se. So here we go. So in the hierarchy select your camera and go to the inspector. Scroll down and click the Add Component button. Select New Script and name your camera pretty much whatever you want, whatever is relevant to you. For me, I'm going to be calling it Camera Script. Very good. Alright, now that that is done, let's open it up in Visual Studio and start hammering this thing out. Now, we won't need the Start function, so let's just get rid of that. Fantastic. Now, we will need to know what game object we will be following here in our scene. So, type Public, Game Object, and Target. Once again, if you have a cutscene or you just walk into an area and want to highlight something, you can change the transform and therefore change the location of your camera. Alright, and now we need to know where the target is, so here we go. Okay, write private vector3, and I'll be calling it target pos. Lastly, we'll need to declare the movement speed, so public float, move speed. Very nice. These are the things that, for now, we'll be using to get this thing up and running. Alright, so move down to the update function where we will be initializing everything. So the first thing you'll need to define is what our target pos is, or target position. As we know, our target position will be our target, which in our case will be our player. And this will be updating every frame. And this will be updating quite often, because our character will be constantly moving, therefore we put it in the update function to handle that. So our formula is as such. We write the object that we want to do things to, so write target pos equals a brand new vector 3 and we're doing this because we're technically working in 3D space. Yes, I know this is a 2D game tutorial, but we are still in the Unity engine which is a 3D game engine by default. And of course, the positions that we want to bring in are as followings: our target transform.position.x, comma, then target transform.position.y, comma, then target transform.position dot z. So every frame, each time that we do this, we're referencing our target and putting all those transforms into our vector 3. Alrighty, now next we can start actually moving our camera. And as a quick warning, this code won't necessarily work at first. I mean it will, but you know, it, it technically works, but you'll see what the error is momentarily. Alrighty, inside our constraints here, we're going to need to define a few things. And that will be where we are, where we want to go, and how fast. So, we say that we want this game object to be affected, so we're going to write transform.position equals vector3.larp, which will give us a smooth transition from point A to point B. There are other functions that we can use as this as well, but this is just what I chose. Now inside of our brackets, we will do this, transform.position, that is our current position, comma, target pos, that is the position that we want to go to, comma, move speed, times time dot delta time. Okay, now that we have all this written down, let's jump back into our editor. Hit play in. <laughs> oh, well, not quite working, as I said, as I said before. No, 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 now what is going on here? Well, your first guess might be to think, well, it's broken. What's, you know, what's going on? What do I have to fix? Now, hold on. Everything is actually working. If you look closely at the z-axis of the camera, you can see that that is the only thing that's moving. Why is that moving? Because we have literally set the z-axis to also follow our player's position, which means it's just going to keep hitting the player in the face over and over and over again until they just stop. And we don't want that. So we need to be able to set that to wherever we, wherever we would like. But for now, let's test this out to see, see if we're working. See if what I'm thinking is true. So we're going to go back here into our code, and let's change the z-axis to, say, negative 10. And of course, aside from our camera not being at the right height, yes indeed, it is now working. However, we can do just a little bit better than this. What if, say, we had a value that we can change on the fly? Say, maybe you do want to zoom in for something. Say, once again, a cutscene or to point something out in your scene. So what do we do there? Well, let's go back up to the top in our code and let's make another float value. And we'll make this float value to replace the Z value. So let's go back up to the top and write public float and I'm going to go ahead and call it my z pos. Let's go ahead and initialize that to negative 10 for now. And go down and replace our z value. Let's go back up to the editor. And yes, it is now working. 
fantastic. Now, lastly, let's work on that camera height. I don't look particularly like looking down below my scene, and I'd like to be able to control how high my camera actually goes, how specifically it follows. So once again, let's go up to the top and let's make ourselves a public float. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this camera height and initialize it to two. Go down to my code and I'm going to replace the Y values with my new code. Fantastic. And I want, of course, this to be initialized to two because I want it to be Go back, hit play, and fantastic, it is now working. We have a camera that follows our player around perfectly. We can change these values if we want and adjust it however we want, and it works fine. Fantastic. But that will be all for today, folks. I hope you found this video helpful and most of all, useful. If you liked the video, it would be really appreciated if you would hit the like and subscribe buttons. But most of all, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.